Hey guys, just making a short video today to show off my Curie Rod collection as requested from uh, Andrew on YouTube. So, yeah, it's not a big collection, but let me show you what they look like. Alright, I guess we'll start with the shortest one, but first I want to comment, man, I like the packaging on Japanese rods. It looks cheap, but it's pretty sweet. They get pretty decorative with their stuff. That's pretty cool. That's the nine footer. There's the field master from SunTech. That's the what is that? Three nine. It's like it's over twelve feet. Conversions, yeah. And then there's my six five, which is twenty one feet from Daiwa. I like all the all the cool Japanese on there, specifications. Fancy packaging again. All the specs there. Cool. And then there's the 30 footer, which I stole a sock from one of my one piece fly rods. So it would be safer in that packaging. More specs there. Cool. So, let's open them up and show them off. Alright, there's the 9 footer. Nissan Fine Mode. This is my lightest rod that I have. All the warranty information there. All in Japanese. Cool, cool. Yeah, so, this thing is what, 20 inches across, that's it? <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Rated up to 4 pounds max. No sun today, so, can't see the blue flake in it. Cool. I love Japanese rods for their artistic looks. In the sunlight, this all has really fine blue flakes. It looks really good in the sun. Yeah. There's the nine footer. Cool. Next up will be the 12 footer. 13 footer. Something like that. <laughs> Alright, so here's the 13 footer. A little longer. Is that like 25 inches or so? There's 18. That's yeah, like 20 inches. This one comes in a nice rod bag. It's meant to be one you take up into the headwaters kind of rod, but this is actually the other rods, the Nissan rod didn't have rod specs on it, but this one does. So that goes, it's a zoom rod, so it goes from 3.2 meters to 3.9 meters. That's how many sections it is. It's nine pieces. That's its closed length, 52 centimeters. That's how much it weighs, 70 grams. That is, I think, the tip diameter and the grip diameter. That squirrel. <laughs> and then that is your, I think it's like, uh, it's a line diameter, but in gouge, gauge, I forget what it is. It's some Japanese specification for nylon diameters so that's like two pound test to four pound test they don't go very much that's your carbon com content yeah suntech isn't as fancy with their rod i gotta put that on my truck now. as fancy with their rod container art but let's open this one up i like rec uh, reclosable containers on these though. they make them it's really practical and like I said, that one comes in a carry bag. Put this down. This one comes in a nice carry bag so you can pack it in the mountains with you. Mountain stream, so yeah. This is my favorite sh eh, medium stream rod around. Well, this is considered a medium stream, so. But about at 13 feet is <clears throat> practical for around most of the small waters I fish. 
what SunTech lacks in their art, their the box art, I guess you'd call it. They make up for it in their rod design, but oh man, a non-slip grip to this. And they really put that silver flake all the way into the handle till about three inches. I love SunTech's art on the, the blanks themselves. All that's iridescent. Just can't see it because there's no sun today. Yep, it's a nice pack rod. Fuji caps, they're really nice. They're hard to get here in the States. Yeah, that's the 13 footer. Again, I really like the looks of these rods. Right, so next up is the 21 footer. All right, so this is the 21 footer from Daiwa. Really cool packaging on this one. It's like the old craft cardboard stuff used for scientific uh, science fair project material. <laughs> Rainbow iridescence. I like it though. It's pretty cool. There's more specs there. 6.5 meter rod. Its closed length is pretty much 80 centimeters. 10 pieces, 170 grams. Millimeter. That's its tip diameter. That's its butt diameter, and this one is rated for two to four pound test again. So this is an overkill for a lot of the streams here. I really like this fishing rod for the Tulpahawken. All right, open it up. This one's kind of falling apart, which is a shame, but oh well. Again, this is another pack rod. Comes in a nice blue felt bag. Nothing much to show there, I guess, but. I really like the looks of these. They're so cool. This is a just a hard graphite finish. It's still non-slip, but it's not as nice as the Suntex. This one changed, it's like that two-tone car paint as you switch it around. It changes color. Hold on. Show me. There you go. There we go. We got some purple and then it changes over to yellow. I like that a lot. That's cool. Cool little carbon fake weave in there that fades to nothing. Cool. So that's the 21 footer. Next up's the 30 footer. All right, this box is huge. It's almost impossible to get into the, the frame. This thing is literally, what would that be? Four, four feet tall? This is a four foot tall closed rod. It's huge. <laughs> Again, SunTex box designs aren't super flashy, just black. There's some specs on there. Ooh, 10.1 meters, 30 feet. This thing's pretty heavy. 10 pieces, 1,000, I guess it would be 1,265 millimeters, but conversions, no. This thing weighs 400 grams. This thing is heavy. <laughs> it's, but it's meant to be for big fish, so it better be heavy. This one's 1.5 millimeters at the tip. 28 millimeters at the butt. That's a big rod. Now this one's rated for, what's that? That's four pound test up to eight pound test. So this thing can take quite a quite a fish. I think this will be good for steelhead come uh, spring up at the uh, Salmon River. I can't wait to try it. Let's get it open. Again, I can't fit this in the frame, so bear with me. I scavenged a fly rod sock for this to keep it safe. Worked out nice. And my old prime one piecer. All right. There's that cap is huge compared to the other rods. It's a weekly special. 
again their rod designs are really really cool i love the color contrast you can kind of see the yellow flake in there but that's non-slip grip they put on there so you don't when you hold it you can hold it out and have better leverage there's all that gold flake showing up i love that that's cool Cool, more gold flake, two sections of non-slip. Yeah, there's the 30 footer. Kind of hard to get that in frame, but this one is really fun. I cannot wait to try for steelhead on the Salmon River this year. This spring, I'm gonna really try for you guys to get a steelhead on it. So hopefully it's not a uh, 30 inch steelhead. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much my ride collection. I know it's not a lot, but uh, yeah, I kind of already have rods covered for what I need in Pennsylvania. I'm really short to super long. It's about as long as you can get in a fixed rod, fixed line rod. But uh, you might ask why I don't have Tenkara rods. I do fly fishing. It's just that here in Pennsylvania, when you see fast water like this, it's usually up past your knees and we don't have super prolific hatches here midges maybe in the winter time but I found only at late May they start really wanting to come up for dry flies except for the Topahawken which the caddis come up pretty good there in the spring and the trachos in the summer but for Tenkara I've never really had a need to have perfect drifts across every little complicated seam because it's always short drifts here and uh it doesn't help that i have like 30 fly rods <laughs> yeah yeah you could say i have quite the fly rod collection <laughs> this is the reason why i never really got into tankara here in Pennsylvania, it's either traditional wets or nymphing. It's dries are very few and far between. It's not like it used to be back in the day where they all had awesome mayfly hatches. Everything just kind of turned to caddis and midges. Yeah, so when they do come up, you guys already saw the video of my Winston. That's a good trico rod. There's Hardy. What is that? Hardy Centrix. Hardy Cirrus. That's a good dry fly rod for glass. Most of my rods are glass. There's a vintage Garcia Conalon. That's a stiff one. It's almost too stiff. There's a 2404. Guys on the forums say that's one of the better old glass Garcias back in the day. Agate stripping guide a nose because that's from the 60s. My grandfather's ugly stick wonder rod. This is a weird or rare rod that it was in between the wonder rod. It's a Shakespeare rod, so ugly stick. Everybody knows those. But it was still called a wonder rod at this time. Very cool one. There's another good glass dry fly rod. Five weight. The FF755, that's a nice one for dries. Very whippy tip top. One of my favorite small stream rods, or medium, is my Phillips and Master. That's an excellent casting fly rod. And I have an itty bitty bitty six foot Garcia. That's a tiny little fly rod, it doesn't cast very well. Another Shakespeare rod, Wonder Glass, seven feet. It's a seven foot five weight. That's another rare fiberglass rod. Then I got my big boy, the 2606 and the 2406. This is a nine weight. Caught salmon on this rod already. That's a big boy rod. Oh yeah. And I got my eight and a half foot seven weight bamboo. It's a bad kill. And then a rare, it's kind of rare, but seven foot six weight bamboo. 
I'm just gonna leave them in their boxes for now. Yeah, that's why I never got into Tenkara, because I have everything to cover wet flies and dry fly fishing here in the States. So there's my collection. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to going fishing for steelhead in the spring, so look forward for that video. I'm going to take a whole week off for work for that, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. I didn't think I'd be done quite that soon, huh? I had to at least try once. Whoa. Yeah, I had to try at least once. Nice brownie. Thank you, dude. See you guys next time.